Hello everyone, we are here live on Paris in the Europe PCR 2022 and uh, in this meeting was presented the 16th consensus document about the bifurcation club, uh, about how to treat bifurcation with PCI and today we have the complete pleasure to interview Professor Francesco Bursota which is a long member from the uh, bifurcation club and a well uh, doctor uh, recognized in this field and he is of course one of the authors of this of this manuscript uh, we will make today a different uh, interview because there is no new data to present mm -hmm. because it's a consensus document so having the opportunity to introduce professor Bursota from Giminelli hospital in Rome uh, I would like to have a view into the history of how who you will have come from zero one I had to say to the 16 document this is a long road so uh, bifurcation interventions are very common. So due to the fact that atherosclerosis develops mainly at atherosclerotic uh, uh, at uh, bifurcation levels. So it, it is a challenge for interventional cardiologists daily and worldwide. And uh, during uh, these years, uh, we uh, learned a lot about uh, I mean how to, to best tackle uh, bifurcation stenting. It was uh, a multidisciplinary approach that was promoted by the European Bifurcation Club and, and uh, trying to, to put on all the scientists interested in the field and uh, engineers, uh, uh, pathologists, uh, I mean all of the people beyond interventional cardiologists that uh, had something to add uh, put together their information. At the end, I think that today, we know a little bit better, I can say, much better than in, in the past, how to uh, treat the uh, coronary bifurcation by PCI. So this is why it, needed, it was a journey, and uh, we really wanted to share the advances step by step. And, and we notice it w when we read the papers, because there are two parts of this b uh, consensus, that's the first time that you have to divide the paper or the consensus document in first how to implant the first stent, and the second document is how to implant a second stent if needed. So I, I would I'd like to know a little bit about how, why you decide to go this direction. So first of all, uh, uh, the, the focus of this uh, um, consensus paper, two papers, is on the pitfalls. So it uh, following the standard techniques, the most adopted techniques, trying to recognize how we may fail in doing and how in the case w there is a problem we may solve and go on with, the, the, with the, our PCI. So this was the purpose. So trying to understand step by step what may happen despite the fact that we think that we had a good plan. So uh, in doing this, uh, we put together all the experiences that are collected all over the world uh, in the bifurcation PCI and in PCI meetings. Because uh, as you know, complication sessions, imaging sessions, all the time show problems that have been solved in another way. And then we tried uh, I mean, as a, a group of people that is very focused on it, to try to recognize which are the common pitfalls, why they happen, and how we may come on, come out from the problem. So all of this was at the end a lot of data, a lot of images, a lot of ideas, and at the end we have Unable, have been unable to put all together in, the <laughs> in, in one paper, so we divided it. How to divide? In two papers, one on provisional, which is the most adopted technique, single stent in most of the simple bifurcations treated all over the world. And on the other side, the other is on two stenting techniques that are probably the one that are practiced less, but are more challenging. So there is a lot of interest on them, and this is uh, the, <laughs> the final result, two papers. Uh, the, I, I really like the approach because it gives the focus that uh, we can treat most of the true bifurcations with one extent, which is an important message. And this led me to my next, uh, the last question is, there is a lot of young people between the audience of, of PCR online, or intervention, and in the Euro PCR 22, uh, people watching us live here and also in the platform and in, in the internet 
you are a very experienced operator, which will be your advice, your piece of advice for young uh, uh, colleagues that are beginning in as their early career in doing bifurcation PCA? So first, uh, uh, it, it is uh, to follow the advices. So it doesn't make sense in this kind of intervention to perform the mistakes that have been already done by other people, recognized and, and <laughs> learned how to avoid. So it is very advisable to follow, I mean, all the information that may have from online resources, from papers, and so on. The other point is the fact that there is uh, 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 two different uh, way of uh, approaching. The most successful one is the one in which the operator is doing not what is an, a, an attempt, but the practice of uh, the, f the sequence of interventions that he feels that will have higher chances of success in his hands. So his or her hands. So I, I think that it is the main message. We should not start a procedure without having in mind which will be the next step, how to end over in the case of problems. Each of the steps we are doing is a selection. It has advantages and it takes also some disadvantages and possible drawbacks. I think that these two papers may help in doing it because there will be a lot of images that may allow you during your practice to compare what you have in the screen from the patient with some of the cartooning we tried to draw at our best. And I, I have reviewed the both of the papers. They are amazing and we have to uh, keep in mind to the audience that the both of the, of the papers are available now at the Aero, uh, Aero Intervention PCR Online webpage. So you can go through them, you can review them into details. And Professor Brusota, it has been a pleasure having an expert like you today with us to comment on this, to, uh, on this paper. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation and for us.